Hey guys, how are you? So, what is the Java job delusion? Let me start off by saying that I have written more lines of Java code than any other language, and I've written commercial code in eight, nine languages. So I love Java. I'm not doing a hit piece on Java here, but I'm gonna give you a little bit of reality about what Java is all about with regards to the job market, which I think for most people, that's what they're most concerned about. Writing Java code means certain things about the type of work and the type of place you will work for. So when you look at Java, it was initially sold as the multi-platform language, uh, multi-use case language. Believe me, I was there in 95 when it was released. Uh, Java was sold as a potential language for creating games for desktop applications, now for mobile with Android. Use it for IoT devices, web apps, etc., etc. This is all true to a certain extent. This is all true to a certain extent. But the reality of the situation is the vast majority of Java development is server side web app development and perhaps a slice of Android development, native mobile Android. But because Google said a couple of years ago, nope. The number one choice language to create your Android apps in now is Kotlin. That's another story. But anyway, most of the jobs, though, are going to be in Java server-side programming and a smidge of Android development. So what kind of web apps are we looking at in the Java world? Well, we're looking at large web apps, big web apps. We're not looking at the light, nimble startups. Again, Java is, like, in my heart, is my favorite language. I love Java. I love the explicitness of the code. It's easy to read and understand. The problem is Java is extremely verbose. You have to write out all that explicit code and it takes time. It takes time. It takes a lot of time. And as I say, many, many, in, in many, many videos, I've said many times, I said, write time speed is far more important than run time speed. Let me say that again. Write time speed, the speed of writing with a particular language is more important than the speed at which the language code runs. That's because software is so optimized these days. The high level languages, the dynamic languages like JavaScript, uh, Python, uh, PHP, Perl, they don't run nearly as quick as Java. Not nearly as quick as Java except for maybe JavaScript, but I would have to check into that. But generally speaking, Java, when it compiles, it's super fast, very performant at runtime. The problem is it's going to take you forever to write anything in Java because that code is so bloody verbose. So even though I love Java, I would not use Java to build any minimum viable product application today. No MVPs in Java for me, that's for sure. I would use Java only in highly specialized situations. Anyhow, that's just me. But it's a lot of other people too. The trend is, in terms of new development, from scratch development, fresh development, is with the later nimbler languages, like the JavaScripts and the PHPs and the Python. But you still see a heck of a lot of Java jobs. Where are those jobs? That's the question. So. All the Java jobs, well, the vast majority, are going to be in larger organizations, mediums to large businesses. <clears throat> Think big banks, etc., government, that sort of th that kind of thing. That's cool, but that that means that you're working for a particular type of company, a, a particular type of organization, which suggests a certain work environment that you may or may not like. So anybody will tell you, if you work for a large organization, you're dealing with HR departments, you have to deal with interpersonal politics. So again, the number two thing, I say again because I talk about it in many videos, the number two things that recruiters look for in their developers, the number two thing that recruiters look for in their developers is their interpersonal skills. This is especially true if you're going to go work for a very large organization. That is huge. I talk to people I never have personally. I've, I've worked in one as a hired gun for like two, three weeks. That's another story. I've never have full time. 
but I know several people who have or had, and it's a different game than working for a small startup or a small business. It's much more regimented, much more controlled, much more about politics and crossing your T's and dotting your I's, HR departments, that kind of thing, dress codes, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So you have to think that if you are going to get a job in Java world, it's probably going to be web app, maybe some Android development, but more importantly, it's going to be for large, medium to large organizations. And the final point, you're probably going to be working on legacy code bases that are being maintained or expanded, not from scratch. And again, that implies a whole different type of development. When you are looking at legacy development, maintaining old apps or expanding them, that implies long development cycles. So you may be working on a particular project, a particular code base for a year, two years, three years, or longer. Again, that may be something you like, but if you're somebody who wants to be able to build something over here and then build another type of app and then finish that off and launch another type of app, if you want something a little bit more dynamic, you may not want to jump into the Java world. That is not, that's, that type of stuff is more akin to the lighter, nimbler languages like the JavaScripts and so forth. Again, these are general, general, generalities. These are not, you know, every, there's always exceptions to the rule, but it's something to consider. In the Java world, they're going to be doing web apps the majority of the time, and you're probably going to be using Spring and Spring Boot. I haven't looked at that framework in a long time. And it's actually lighter and nimbler compared to previous Java frameworks, believe me, but it's still pretty heavy. It's still pretty heavy. Lots of configurations, lots of config files, lots of XMLs you got to fill in. I was talking to a friend of mine who's a, an active Java developer, and he tells me maybe half of his job is configuration, configuring app servers, config files, dealing with config conflicts, chasing down semicolons that are missing that breaks an application, big long deployment cycles, having to get up at four in the morning on Saturday to make sure the app is deployed properly because you're working on enterprise level apps. Enterprise means huge. So you can't have a banking app go down, right? So you better, they do it on the weekends and they do it at four in the morning. So it makes sure everything, if anything breaks, they can roll back without disrupting too many people. So this is, uh, this is Java, this is, this is Java. Now, again, highly paid, lots of Java jobs out there, no question, but it's that world. Whereas if you're going into the JavaScript web world or the PHP web world, it's small business, maybe medium size, typically. You're working on small, nimble projects, you're done in two months, a month, three months, maybe four months. Very quick development cycle, in and out, trying different things, working on different things. When you work for small business, you're going to have a lot more um, responsibility, perhaps. Whereas if you work for a, in a, in a giant, on a giant project, you may be just in, involved with the authentication layer for a Java-based app for a while. Or you may be involved with some reporting component that you have to keep expanding or debugging. Whereas if you work for a small business, you're probably going to be working on broader aspects of the app. So it could be a lot more fun for you as a programmer because it's more general and you know you can jump around. There's some change in that as opposed to being stuck on working on a particular feature for a long period of time. Just something to consider. So the final point, when you're doing Java development because you're going to likely be working for larger organizations, the chance for remote work or less. That being said, post-COVID, there's more opportunity for re remote work in the Java world, no question about that. But it's much more common in small business because small businesses are not so bound by culture. And culture is a big part of the impact of how a developer lives their day-to-day -day life as a developer working for a company. Big corporations tend to have very strong cultures Cultures based on old models of, uh, uh, you know, of running a business where they want people to show up at work a lot, you know. And you see that now. There's a big battle brewing out there on the, uh, in the world between management wants people to come in and between coders who don't want to come in. Again, 
when you're working for small businesses and medium-sized businesses, that cultural weight, if you will, on you is not as heavy as it is when you're working for a large business. And again, as I said, most of the time, Java is going to be leveraged in large organizations who are maintaining legacy code bases. Yes, in the comments below, I'm sure somebody will say, yeah, but I know this one company. Yes, there are always exceptions to every rule. Bottom line is, before you jump into the Java world thinking, this is what I want to do, I always suggest look at the job opportunities in your area. Go to the job sites, check out the job opportunities, check out the companies that are using Java, and make your own assessment. See what's going on. So to wrap up, Java, typically large organization, typically web although you will see some Android. Again, with the Android though, it's tipping more towards Kotlin for Android development now. That's because Google recommended Kotlin over Java. And it affects your career. So the Java job delusion in a nutshell is, you're probably not gonna be doing too much gaming. You're probably not gonna be doing desktop development. You're probably not gonna be doing IoT stuff. You're probably gonna be doing legacy projects, maintaining and upgrade, updating legacy code bases at large companies, which implies a certain type of work that you will do. I hope this is useful. Thanks for watching. If you want to be mentored by the 169 year old developer, that's me, Uncle Steph, check out unclesteph.com. I have a mentoring program. It's still open to people if you're interested. It's a hybrid boot camp where you get the best of both worlds. You get the in-classroom like experience where we have live coaching sessions but you also get the advantages of distance learning with my custom interactive gamified learning platform. Brought together, you get great learning experience in becoming a professional developer without the huge cost that you typically see in a boot camp where you're gonna be paying four, five, ten, twenty thousand dollars for a boot camp or spending four years in a college program. Check it out below, Uncle Steph. Thanks for watching. Bye.